All right, here's what we call a sort of tricky stoichiometry problem. So our goal is to figure out this formula, C3HX, and we're given some information that when a certain amount of it reacts, it produces this much water. So we're going to work through this, and we would, at the end of this, we'll be able to figure out what this is. So the first thing is this is stoichiometry, so this reaction must be balanced. We have to first balance this thing to make sure it works. So let's go through and do that. So at the moment, we have three carbons on the left, but we need three on the right. So I'm going to put three here to balance the carbons. Um, now, however, there are X hydrogens on the left, and there are two on the right. <clears throat> So somehow I have to balance those. And there's a couple ways to go about doing this. <clears throat> One thing I would do is say, what's the least common multiple of 2 and x? And the answer is 2x. So in other words, if I put a 2 in front of this here and an x in front of that, now my hydrogens balance. I have 2x hydrogens on the left, and I have 2x hydrogens on the right. Um, I have to fix my carbons now. This one, instead of a 3, I'll need to be a 6. And if I want to finish this off and balance the oxygens, I have a total of 12 plus X oxygens on the right, 12 from the CO2 and X from the water. So I need 12 plus X over here, but these are being multiplied by 2, so I really need 12 plus X over 2. So now I have a balanced chemical reaction. <coughs> I can proceed with this problem. So how do I do it? I want to start by writing out all the things I need. So I'm looking at these chemicals, C3HX and H2O. And so there's always three things we can write. Uh, the first thing I'm going to write is the connection in moles between them. So for every two moles of C3HX, we are going to produce X moles of water. So that's important. So you always want the mole-to-mole -mole connection. And then you usually want the molar masses as well. So one mole of C3HX, I need to know how many grams that is. So if I add this up, C3HX, <coughs> three Cs, is going to be 36.06. And the hydrons, hydrons 1.01, .01, and depending on how many of them there are, that will affect the mass. So it's 1.01x. So if x is 5, it'll be 5.05. .05. If x is 3, it'll be 3.03. .03. The big thing is to make sure that this makes sense. Like, get a number in your head for x, plug it in, and see if you get the correct molar mass, because this is where most students make a mistake. And the last one is that, hey, one mole of water... <coughs> is 18.02 grams, which I just get by adding that up. So this is the problem. Now we just set it up. So I have 4.56 grams of C3H6, and I know it produces this much water. So I have to get from grams of C3H6 to grams of water. So the first thing I do, I have uh, the molar mass of C3H6, so 36.06 plus 1.01x grams of C3H6, over one mole of C3H6. And then I know that, okay, for every two moles of C3H6, I will get X moles of water. And then lastly, for every one mole of water, I will have 18.02 grams of water. And all of that is going to equal 5.86 grams. So now I have an algebraic equation to solve. So I'm going to start solving that. So first off, grams of this cancels with grams of this. Moles of this cancels with moles of that. Moles of water cancels with moles of water. And then the grams here cancel. So the only thing left should be the numbers. So I'm going to have 4.56 times 1 over 36.06 plus 1.01x times x over 2 times 18.02 equals 5.86. Now I'm just going to start combining these. So I'm going to multiply these out and I'm going to simplify this. So just doing some simplification, I reach this. So I multiply 4.56 times 18.02 in x and I get this numerator. I get this denominator equals 5.86. So again, I still have some more simplification to do. So I can simplify it to this by distributing the two. And now I'm going to bring the denominator over to the other side. So I'll multiply both sides by the denominator. And I actually forgot to put an x here, if that was in the numerator. So I simplify this equation, 82.17x equals 422.62 plus all this. So I'm not going to do all this algebra for you, but when you're done, you should be able to solve for x and find that x equals 6. And it should be a nice whole number because what was x representing? It was representing the amount of hydrogen in this formula. So the fuel then is C3H6. And one thing that's nice about this is you could go back and do this entire problem with this knowledge 
do the problem without any variables and you should find that this much C3H6 produces this much water. So you could always double check your answer and see that you've done this right if you have the time to do it. So that's pretty much it. It's a matter of setting up that equation, um, making sure the equation is balanced, and, and this is how these problems go. But I just recommend you do a lot of practice, get comfortable with it. Um, this is one of the harder problems you'd probably see. So until next time, I am Derek Genova. Have a delightful day.